Welcome everybody to our live class series. My name is Eric Landis. I'm the creator of the Spintertainment Mountain Bike Spin video series. Tonight we're doing the Sedona Authentic Trail Workout, which as you see from the graph there, it is um, kind of random. There's no real structure to the workout. Whatever we see on screen is what we do. Please go check out our sponsors. We are building new videos all the time. And uh, I've got some new sponsors in the works right now. I know you guys have been hearing me talk about this forever, but it's actually happening. So we're starting at the village of Oak Creek, uh, which is just outside of the, the main town, the main city of Sedona. Of course, we're in Arizona. This was actually filmed uh, in winter, but uh, they ride year round down there. Here's our heads up display, the on-screen graphic that uh, tells us what it's gonna feel like from a one out of 10 scale. Shows us the body position, our uh, pedal speed or cadence. We've got a total time bar, which will slowly turn green as we go through the workout. And then of course, what's coming up next? We work on a one out of 10 scale. So this is not the gear on your bike. This is your personal fitness level. Level five being your neutral all day workload. Anything above a level five, you feel like you're uh, kind of have to quit. Anything below a level five, you can be recovering. So we're starting by heading up the Slim Shady Trail. Slim Shady, as we get up in here, we're gonna be right up against sort of a cliff edge where we're in the shade. Even in the middle of the day, we're shadowed by the cliff edge. A Sedona doesn't give you much of a warm up. We're gonna get right into it pretty quickly here. We're gonna pedal lightly now. We're gonna step into this first standing eight. Now, I don't want you, this isn't the sprint, so don't, don't be confused on, on what we're asking here. This is a smooth, symmetrical, paced standing effort. For those of you new to class with us, you can hear the music change and we're pedaling right to the beat. We're gonna be standing for eight more seconds. Going back to the sitting position at a level four is below your threshold. Should feel pretty easy in two, one, down. So this was a rare weekend where we had kind of some time off for the, with the family, but we still had a soccer game. So we took, we went to the soccer game Saturday morning, but we were loaded and ready to head out. And we drove straight to Moab right after the soccer game. We went to the North Klondike Bluffs trail system. We weren't actually sure we were gonna go there. But after some looking around, those trails aren't the largest climbs. They're nice, nice climbs and there's a bunch of trails up there. And they have primitive camping where we could just pitch our tent and kind of be on our own. We brought the BB gun, the kids had fun shooting cans. We had a fire. Oh, and what we didn't know is when we got there, there was a hike up to real dinosaur tracks. And so the kids got to play, like jump inside of like real dinosaur tracks. All right, here we go. We're adding some resistance. Now what's happening here is we're pedaling more quickly. So we're up to a 90 feet per minute or 90 RPM. Now, sometimes without even changing your gear ratio, when you speed up, your wattage is going to increase and the workload increases. Some of our workouts are actually a steady state or a steady gear. Oh, and we're st standing again. These come quickly. All right, in three, two, one, we're back to our all day threshold. Level five, we're pedaling along uphill, going past the Made in the Shade Trail. Now I am only featured in two of the videos in our series, and this is the first one. So yeah, it was a nice surprise to get to go walk in dinosaur tracks. The kids are super into dinosaurs, always have been. Sometimes I tell this story about 
how today's kids can learn so much more about things that are, they're interested in. And you know, we have Netflix and they're connected to a kid's account, which limits their content. But if you search dinosaurs, oh my gosh, there's so many shows they can watch about dinosaurs. When I was a kid, I thought dinosaurs were cool, but there was only like two books. And those got old pretty quick. <laughs> so, the kids are super fascinated. They know a lot about them, and then to see the real remnants of the dinosaurs was awesome. All right, now we're gonna step up that intensity. Faster pace, step up a gear. The trail just got a little bit steeper. Watch out for cactus. Those yucca plants and the cactus are deadly down in Arizona. Now Slim Shady is a popular trail that intersects and links up with several other trails along the highway here. We're headed kind of along the highway. All right, we're backing back down. All right, flattened out. We're just chugging along at a nice, comfortable 80 feet per minute. Level five. Hell, turn the fans on, yeah. You know, I was kind of feeling my sweat start up here. And I always sweat, I don't even think about it. You know, they have a fan that you can put on the trainer so I don't sweat as much, but I don't ever use it. I just want to sweat. I want to feel that heat. All right, now we're starting to get more intense. We're going up to a level seven. So level seven, we're going to go to what may feel like an uncomfortable 100 RPM. These 100s are a good race pace. This is where you're truly trying hard. Get ready in three, two, one. Up your speed. Now I'm adding a couple gears, adding some resistance, and stepping my pedal speed up. So you can see we're going through some tight, steep, punchy, undulating terrain. It's pretty steep. The rider language is chest down. Really pushing hard through here. We're starting to crest out of it. In three, two, one, and down. All right, now a lot of times when I say down, we go to a recovery. But in this case, these authentic workouts, there's not much legit recovery. Out in the real world, you're always putting out power. You're always having to move things forward. What I love about these authentic workouts is the way that they force you to deal with adversity. You're gonna have plenty of moments where your body <laughs> is not recovered and it's time to put out work again. Going uphill at a nice steady pace. Nothing too steep right now. One of the trails that, that uh, Baby Steps Trail in Moab I keep talking about. It was a five degree average downhill slope. So five degree is awesome. I'll tell you why in a second. Here we go, stepping up to level seven again. Up that pedal speed, add a couple gears. So five degree downhill, and the trail's pretty straight. What that means is you don't have to use the brakes. It is so much fun. Just like monster trucking and mobbing, smashing rocks. And just full fisting the bars. No brakes. You don't have to pedal, you don't have to brake. You just keep charging and having fun, holding on. All right, four, three, here we go into a standing. No recovery here, straight into a standing. It gets steeper. Only 15 seconds here. A slower pedal speed. But I added a couple of gears of resistance. 
when I moved up to the standing position. Two, one, back down. All right, pay attention, no recovery. We're back to a level five. Heart rate check, 167. Wattage, 292. Nice steady, 80 RPM. 80 should feel good to you guys. Three, here we go back to level seven. 100 RPM and up. I've got sweat dripping off my eyebrows already. You guys know before I work out, I try to drink a lot of water. I drink some caffeine. Five, four, three, two, and we're standing. Level nine, really tough standing effort. You're gonna have to move your hips forward, pulling on the handlebars, putting all your power into it. 10 seconds to go. Three, two, one, back down to a seven. Oh man, still working hard. It's steep here. You can see the rider body language, really putting down power. If you're having trouble keeping speed, don't be afraid to shift down. Okay. Speaking of shifting down, here's your recovery. 10 seconds, you love it? All right, let's go back to work. Two, one, back on. It's steep. We're pushing hard at the six. And now down to a four. All right, now four, you're not fully letting off. So I'm down to gear nine, turn it about 100 watts. This is easy for me, but I still feel pressure in the pedals. I'm still having to push to turn the cranks over. You can see the beautiful views. Now these level fours, anything below a five, in theory your heart rate should be dropping. Hey, we found some friends, hi guys. Those guys were riding by and I was like, hey, you guys wanna be in a movie? They're like, yeah, sure. So we got these two shots with them and then they left because the cameramen are really slow. All right, back to a level six. We're stepping up that intensity. Now this is a level six at an 80. This is a relatively slow speed, high resistance. You should really feel it burn right now, pushing hard. And we're to the top again. A little downhill dip gonna kind of help us coast to the top of the next one, now downhill again. We're taking deep breaths while still pedaling. This is called active recovery, when you're still moving forward, but you're trying to recover. Drop that heart rate and get the burn out of your legs. All right, back to another level six at that 80 RPM. 80 is pretty slow. So level six at an 80 is actually a higher gear than a level six at a 90 or 100. So you're gonna go into a higher gear and you really should feel your muscles have to torque to get the cranks over. Here we go in three, two, one, and up into it. What you should feel here is your muscles start to give you fits before your cardio does. So your breath, your breathing is not gonna get crazy. We're just digging deep into the muscle fibers recovery here, getting even harder, make a change to a seven, faster RPM.
Sedona was one of the first videos we filmed and we came back with not enough footage to fill a one hour workout. So we had to fill in with some scenic B-roll shots. Now let's pay attention here. We're going into a 10 second standing smooth level eight. Here we go, up. All right, we're moving from a standing eight to a standing 10 and two, one, all sprint. Get up it, five seconds to go. Four, three, get up, 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 up. And you're there. All right, full recovery. All right, heart rate check, 176. All right, above my threshold. So I'm trying to drop my heart rate. Now, as you practice, you can recover quickly. As you get fitter, you'll recover more quickly. I'm thinking relaxation. Shoulders down and back. Light pedal them. I'm in gear one. No resistance. You can stop pedaling if you want. I want that heart rate to drop. 15 seconds to go. My heart rate is down to 134. I want to get below 130, 127. All right, I'm down close to 50 beats per minute, 125. All right, here we go. Rolling the power back on at a comfortable level five again. So we're just going to leave our break point. We're going to take a left and go up high line, turning off of Slim Shady. High line starts to turn into kind of some black diamond territory. High line is really steep, really chunky, with lots of exposure. It doesn't get steep immediately. We're going up a dried up creek bed right now, twisting and turning back and forth. That's a little rock bridge they built on the way in. I think it's to uh, help mitigate water flow. Are we getting ready to turn above threshold to our level six? In five, four, three, two, one. All right, adding a little bit of resistance. Now what I like to do on these is find that main beat with my left foot. My left foot's my weak side. I always wanna put more emotional energy into it try to stay symmetrical. Okay, gearing up some more. Keeps getting steeper. Same pedal speed, same 90. You're working hard right now. Well above what you can maintain for a long time. Big deep breaths. I'm really having to dig for oxygen now. I'm trying to stretch my lungs out. Breathe in until your lungs are stretching out. Physically getting bigger. Push air all the way out until you just can't get any more out. You've got to practice breathing. All right, long standing eight coming up. It's gonna get super steep and chunky. And two, one, and we're up. Now, we're standing up to uh, put body English into the ride and create torque and power. There's a technique called a hip thrust where you have your hips forward 
and you push the bike forward through your legs to get the rear tire up and over square edges. You can't do that when you're sitting down. In fact, a lot of times I use my, my dropper seat post and I drop the seat out of my way, even when climbing. All right, we're almost there. 15 seconds. Race that beat. Try to stay with it. I know it's hard. 80 RPM from the standing position is difficult. There we are, two, one, and crash a little harder. We're almost there. Up around this corner, lots of torque. All you can give. Come on, 10 more seconds. Five, three, two, one, down. Okay, we're down to a threshold. So a threshold is a workload that your heart rate stays steady. So, in theory, if your heart rate's above threshold, you would not recover quickly. Your heart rate's gonna stay up. My heart rate was 176. I'm down to 178. I'm at 168. I know I've got more in the tank. I'm adding some gearing back in. It's a long threshold pedal. The threshold obviously is relative to your condition. <clears throat> After that big climb coming up high line, you're probably feeling fatigued, a little bit of burn. So what you can maintain, the wattage has changed. <clears throat> I'm doing 390 watts, gear 18, pretty close to what I was doing before actually. The difference is it hurts a lot more. <clears throat> Focusing on my left leg, striking that hard beat. Gear 18, 80 RPM, 370 watts. High rates, 167, slowly climbing, 168. I've got a pedal of sweat below me already. Here's some real helicopter footage for this trail. We did not use a drone. We hired a real helicopter to chase our rider around. It's pretty exciting. The section of trail is so steep on both sides and surrounded by so much vegetation. It was tough to film. We couldn't see the rider from the ground level. Hey, you guys don't need a break. We're gonna add some gearing. You guys ready? Let me hear it. Three, two, one. Go faster. Up to this 90 RPM pedal speed. We're going 
going uphill at a traverse. We're on this, this shelf cut into the mountain. In less than a minute, we've got some steep switchbacks coming up. Now, not all of our videos are authentic like this one, where we follow along with the trail. Many of our videos have engineered high intensity intervals that give you a nice recovery and let you practice certain positions from sprint to trail endurance to long cross country endurance. This one is real life. We're going uphill, it's about to get steeper. In three, two, one, head up. Up these switchbacks. It's hard to get traction. The rocks are trying to stop you. Here we go, another tight right-hander. Straight up in three, two, one. And we're still standing. We're not done yet. Ten seconds more. Nice smooth standing. Five. Four, three, two, one, and down to a down to a threshold. Now, compared to those sprints, the threshold will feel a little bit easy. Okay, heart rate peaked out 177. All right, enjoy this next minute, because after this we get what is a long level uh, seven, four minutes in one position. If you're doing this right, your lower back might start to hurt. When I do these long seated efforts, my lower back hurts. As I get fitter, that stops happening. It's not like a back damage type feeling, it's a burn, a muscle burn. I spend a lot of time trail riding, a lot of time standing, and a lot of time racing downhill. So these, these long seated efforts, and I know four minutes doesn't sound very long, but it's gonna feel long. Big deep breaths, trying to get ready, emotionally prepare here. I want you to practice this fast pedal, this 100, if you can maintain it. Here we go. I talk a lot about symmetry. I find myself cheating. I use my strong leg and I push so hard that my right leg can, or my left leg can coast. I push, push, push. Push. What I want to do is be a little bit opposite. Put a little extra effort into that weak leg and don't let my strong leg control the pedal. Try to emotionally push on my left leg. Pedaling to the beat, 100 RPM. While trying to keep your shoulders and neck relaxed, it's okay to put a little core, try to help turn your legs over. I don't want you to waste energy, but I want you to be digging deep. All right, less than three to go. You can see some smoke down in the valley from some fires in California that blew in. <laughs> so 
So in Moab, when we got there Saturday, we started up mega steps. It's a pretty big climb. And we had both kids. And Porter, the nine-year-old, is training for the, uh, the Grand Junction Hot Road Race. He's gonna race the 15-mile class. And 15 miles and the technical trails of the lunch loops in Grand Junction is serious. So we asked Porter to focus on race pace and get to the mountain, the top of the mountain unassisted. So Sarah stayed with Porter and they went ahead. And I took Emmett, the six year old, hooked him to the towy bungee strap, and headed uphill. And I'll tell you what, I had a camera bag on that had like 30 pounds in gear, my drone, spare batteries, and I was pulling that kid up. And I got a heck of a workout, you guys. Porter beat us to the top, and he was at the top resting by the time Emmett and I caught up. But we got to the top of that trail network, and both kids were like stoked on it. They had fun. Normally with little kids, riding uphill for a long ways is uh, kind of painful. But we got to the top and we got to shred down a trail called Alaska to Homer. And just like the name sounds, it was epic. So fun, nothing too dangerous. The kids were able to just ride on their own and just pretend they were monster trucks and go up and over the slick rock boulders. We got down to the truck set up our tent, and we went for a hike up to see the dinosaur trails, flew the drone at sunset, took some pictures, then went back to camp, lit a fire, made dinner. Sleep in the tent. It was about 40 degrees, which is perfect for camping. All right, guys, we're to the top. We're to the lookout at the top of Highline in three, two, one, full recover. Woo! Oh man, I'm a sweaty mess. <clears throat> now we're looking over the backside of the other mountain. We're gonna go downhill for a long ways here, but just because we're going downhill doesn't mean we're gonna coast. Going downhill, we're going to soak up the bumps. We're gonna hit some jumps. We're gonna corner. We're gonna have to Accelerate and sprint out of the corners. Push back while we're braking. Try to keep it on two wheels, you know what I mean? All right, we're gonna go into a series of jumps. Nine seconds standing, nine seconds sitting. Same pace. Here we go in three, two, one, and up. This will be a manageable 80 RPM from the standing position. This is Difficult but achievable. Now you go down. Don't change the gear. This should be difficult because it's such a high gear. It's a standing gear, but you're torquing it over from the seated position back up to standing. And sitting. This song was custom made for this interval. It's nine seconds down, nine seconds up. You can see our rider. Full sprint, going down the straightaway. Pedaling going downhill is extra rewarding because you get that speed you get to hold on to. Once you get your mile per hour up on a bicycle, you can maintain it. But if you don't ever sprint, you don't ever get your top speed up, you'll be going slower the whole time. So short, nine second bursts, and then maintain over and over again. And up. And down. Got eight left. And up. Down. 
Little drift action there. Down. wide. Knees over your toes. Don't let the knees cave in. Up. Down. All right. Last one coming up. Two. One. Head up. Slowing down to an under threshold level four and two, one, down. Okay, slow pedal, 60 RPM, but you're still putting out power. Again, a level four means you can feel the resistance. You're still having to push the bike forward. You've slowed your speed. You're trying to drop your heart rate. All right, it was 172. Careful here, it's starting to get kind of skinny. Don't turn left. Hold on to it, hey, hey, whoa, whoa. Oh man, you scared me. I thought you were going off the edge. Careful now. We're not done yet, we're not out of it yet. Now what we've got coming up is the high line chute. It's about to get way steeper, way rougher, way more treacherous. We're gonna go to a standing level nine for a minute, 49. This is going to be a brutal exercise of fitness. A lot of people think that riding downhill on a mountain bike, especially fast, is easy. It's just coasting. Well, that's not the truth at all. We have to. Do all the things I talked about earlier. Accelerate and pump, soak up the bumps, lean the bike, engage the core and shoulders. When I race downhill, my heart rate goes way higher than it does when I'm going uphill. Nice little fun downhill drop there. Turning right, you can see we're on slick rock covered in dust, but the dust has been scooted aside from all the tire tracks. All right, we're getting ready to hit this high line drop in. We're gonna gear up to a stiff level nine, stand up, push into it. It's only gonna be a 70 RPM. You're not pedaling too quickly. Here we go. We're up. We're accelerating into this drop in. You gotta catch a bunch of gears, develop a bunch of speed, and clear this gap dropping in. Boom! Here we go. And it's on, it's about to get hectic. When I was getting chased by the helicopter dropping into this chute, there was a rider pushing his bike uphill. It was a little sketchy. We didn't crash into each other. You can see that attack position. Legs at a 90 degree, soaking up the bumps. Elbows high, probably gripping the bars a little too tight. All of these sections look easy on video. In real life, they're tough to even stay on the bike. They're so scary. Feels like it's gonna flip you over the front tire. Going over a rock dragon's back here. Through this ravine. 
We're almost there. Still standing. We're getting all the way to the bottom. We get a recovery here. Stay with it. Don't lose the beat. 10 seconds. Four, three, two, one, down. Now we're actually going uphill here, up this dried up creek bed, but this is a recovery point. Technically it's easy, relatively smooth. When I was discussing this route with the locals, they were like, oh, it's only six or seven miles, but that's like, that's like 14 Sedona miles. Like Sedona is so technical and punchy physically. Each mile feels like two. Last time I was in Sedona earlier this spring at the Sedona Mountain Bike Festival, put on by Over the Edge Sports down there. Um, I went and rode this trail called Highline. And uh, Highline, no not Highline, Hangover. Sorry, the other H, Hangover. And I thought it had something to do with like maybe drinking too much the night before, but we went up and rode it. And it was like, sorry, adding resistance. It was like a side hill cliff that you were riding on above like a cliff and you're hanging over the edge of one of those uh, slick rock formations in the background. And it was all wet and like water was seeping out of the rocks because it was spring and it had a lot of moisture. And so slick rock and moisture don't go together. And it was super fun, I think you should do it. I'm just saying, it was exciting. Sedona's got this landscape between the green of the, of the vegetation and the red of the dirt and the blue of the sky. Every picture, every video clip I see, it's like, oh, that was done in Sedona. Sedona just has a, a, a world all its own, the way it looks and feels. Some of the desert style trails can tend to look and feel the same, but Sedona has a distinct style to it. All right, here we go. We're getting ready to go downhill some more. We got 14 second jumps this time. Level eight, here we go. Up, go. This is a short downhill. We're just gonna be crushing, trying to get that speed up. We got three sets here. And sitting down. It's hard to crank over that seated position because your gear is so high. Push through the heel. Here we go, standing up again in two, one, and up. Here's another one of these custom built songs. 14 seconds up, 14 seconds down. Down. Coming up. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. You'll hear me use the word another one instead of last one as much as I can. And the uh, and the biking community saying one more time or one last time is a curse. And here's why. I saw a picture pop up on my social media this week of a friend of mine. He's a young kid, it's a good mountain bike rider. And he's getting ready to go to prom. And the picture of is him and him in a cast. 
and he said, right before prom, I had to do it one more time. Boom, when you say one more time, a couple things happen. One, you like emotionally disengage and you're thinking of going home. Two, if you're doing it one more time, that means you've been doing it a while and you're tired. And when you're tired, you make mistakes. So it's just a fresh reminder of why I don't say one more, one more time if I can help it. All right, back up to uh, level five. You can see the terrain has completely changed. We were up in the high slick rock desert and uh, then we were in those creek beds and now we're all the way down by the river. We're headed to uh, uh, Red Rock Crossing. I have a Red Rock Crossing story. The spring when I was there, uh, my friend, I was working the booth uh, showing some entertainment videos. My friend was there riding and he went to Red Rock Crossing. He asked the ranger station, how deep is it? And they said like knee deep. He asked the bike, uh, the bike shop, and they said, oh, it's like maybe waist deep. He stepped into the main channel. It was like eight feet deep. He had his bike on his back. And his bike, his, his uh, pedal, caught his, his backpack. And it was like holding him underwater while he was trying to swim. Luckily he got out of there, but if you think you're gonna cross Red Rock Crossing, just be careful. I have not tried it, but. We are on the south side of Red Rock Crossing where we are. We're gonna turn back north again and stay clear of it. So we're going through this area that kind of feels like jungle all of a sudden. We've got like tunnels of trees the sun can't even get through. Now we're gonna turn left, uh, staying on Baldwin Trail. And there is a steep climb coming up here that is amazing. We're gonna go to a full sprint, 10 out of 10 for 18 seconds. Here we go, start adding resistance now. Three, two, one, and crush it. You gotta pedal fast, try to keep that speed up. The rocks are grabbing your pedals, grabbing your tires, trying to stop you. You got a hip thrust. Use all your body language, and you're up at three, two, one, down. Woo! Hey, I just looked up. We've only got a few minutes left. How's it going, Ryder? We're at this workload that we're working, but we can hold on to it a long period of time. But we're about to step up. Here we go. It's going uphill. Turning frantic. 100 RPM. I'm gear 18. 485 watts. Two. One. We're to the top. Back down again. All right. Cruising along. Now this section of trail is pretty flat. It's not too punchy. It's got a couple ups and downs here. Two, one, back down again. So we're just plugging along. Now what a lot of people do is when they get to a hill, they just shift down and back off. What I wanna teach you to do is when you get to a hill, to accelerate, push through it. What I've found about hills is the faster you are, the shorter they last. All right, now we're to a point where it's just a steady grade. We're level six, above threshold. I'm gear 17, pedaling along at 90 RPM. Try to get comfortable here. Find your pace to the end of the workout. You're nice and warm. When I say warm, I don't mean the sweat rolling off you. I mean your body is as loose and as limber as it's going to be. 
Your breath should come easy. resistance. There it is. 170, 171. Now I'm starting to feel it. That threshold is where your pain says, that's it. You can't do anymore. Okay, 175. I'm too high. I'm back and back down. I know above 172, I'll have a crash. I won't be able to maintain it. Using this statistics, this data, will help you get the most out of your workouts. I backed the gear off, but I'm still climbing 177. Thinking, relax, while I'm still maintaining my pedal speed, I'm trying to figure out how to pedal efficiently. I'm still 176, 175, I'm trying to maintain my power. while dropping the heart rate. 174. It's a little easier when I'm not trying to talk at the same time. Big deep breaths. Trying to maintain. One seventy-three. I'm doing good. I haven't slowed down. 174. I'm pretty dialed in here. I'm uh, gear 16, wattage 370, pedal speed about 91, staying with the beat. Heart rate 173. I'm perfect. I'm right where I want to be training your body to be comfortable. Now right now, at 173, I feel pretty comfortable. I'm not dying. I can stay here for a long time. I'm practicing this position. It's really good for you. I'm sweating a lot. I'm breathing hard. This is hard. It's just maintainable. I stopped paying attention. My heart rate went up to 176. I have to focus on keeping the heart rate down on purpose. It's not an accident. You guys can do it, 20 seconds. Don't slow down. Fight for that beat. That's okay. Got a steep little punchy climb. Coming up in three, two, one. Bear into it. 
It's only 30 seconds. Recovery coming up in 20. Big deep breaths. Panic breathe. All you can give. Don't be afraid. Get there. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! All right, guys. We're almost there. We're almost to the end. We've got a steep little climb coming up. Three, two, one, and up. Four, stay there. Two, all the way to the end, all the way to the end, and down. All right, we got another interval. A standing nine for 11 seconds. Coming up in five, four, three. Add resistance now, here we go, up and sprint. Fast, standing 90. These are really tough. And three, two, one, down. Spread that cool down. Great work. All right, these cool downs. I'm just pedaling lightly. I'm down to basically my first gear. I'm not just gonna stop and leave that lactic acid in my muscles. I'm pedaling lightly, pedaling loosely, letting the blood flow, trying to get that burn gone from that last big effort. After you get done with class, if you've got time, I recommend you cool down even more. I recommend you do a nice stretching routine after you're warmed up. It's gonna be a great time to stretch. Don't forget your upper body too, not just your legs. Personally, I like to do a, a strength training routine afterwards as well. Just some basic stuff, push-ups, pull-ups, body weight squats, lunges, maybe some sit-ups and core work. Just hit the major muscle groups, shoulder presses. Man, you guys will be good. Once again, thank you to our sponsors for helping us make this happen. entertainment spinning sucks without us that's our new motto it's not on the t-shirt yet but it's coming give yourselves a round of applause thank you so much for joining me see you next time Woo!